hello there and welcome back to another review yes it's me again with another another godzilla movie review and i do apologize if you're getting tired um, of the godzilla movie reviews but i'm just having a bit of a godzilla sort of vibe at the minute so i just thought while i'm in this mood i'll give you my thoughts and opinions uh, on the movies and i've been trying to you know go in order still some way to go as i mentioned but we're, we're slowly getting there Today we're going to be looking at Destroy All Monsters, made back in 1968 and directed by Ishiro Honda. Ninth film in the franchise, and this one, Destroy All Monsters, it's quite a special one, um, especially in terms of the early days of Godzilla. We get a wide range and assortment of monsters here from Mothra, Rodan, King Ghidorah, Godzilla, Anguirus, and some monsters making their Godzilla debut in Manda. Gorosaurus and Baragon etc so you're definitely getting the bang for your buck in terms of what monsters you get in this movie you're definitely getting a what big right wide range of assortment of mo uh, monsters here um, you're definitely getting bang for your buck um, though initially I think a lot of reviews for this movie I think they were mixed uh, and I think that's putting it very very politely I think a lot of the reviews were very mixed leaning towards more negative uh, i think the idea with this movie and its original early concept was to just include all the monsters that have been featured in the toho movie up to this point and bring it all like in all the monsters in there like in their, in their arsenal together on the screen in a feature movie so we have like a monster island in this film and i think as a filmmaker honda the director was actually fascinated with this concept and like the idea of like how humans would keep them feed them look after them like sort of if like humans were in charge of looking after these mon uh, monsters i think honda was pretty for quite interested in that idea and that as sort of a plot device um sort of them all being on monster island uh like i say how humans would keep them, feed them, and like they say, that the idea of marine biology and underwater farming. In many ways, sort of what would later go on to be sort of, you know, the Jurassic Park uh, type of movies with these monsters kept by humans on a faraway island. He wanted to show, I think he initially wanted to show as well, like lunar col like some more of the lunar colonies and a new hybrid monsters being the results of sort of genetic splicing and things of that nature, but obviously budget constraints and certain limitations. That didn't actually happen. And that time had a huge, huge impact, you know, impact and why this wasn't um, really gone into. A lot of people like this one, though, because of the simple story, the monsters involved, the soundtrack and, of course, the destruction that, you know, make no mistake, there is there is a lot to be enjoyed here. There really is. Um, I think in the very early stages, too, this was even going to be the last film in the franchise with the idea being let's get all the monsters in, let's go out on a high, let's make it as fun as possible, get Honda back and have one big last hurrah and crack of the whip, so to speak. Like with Invasion of Astro Monster, the premise as its core is aliens and them wanting to use the monsters to take control of Earth. So, you know, with the whole nuclear testing thing, I'll keep mentioning this and, and I probably will continue to mention it in every sort of uh, Godzilla movie I review I do. But like, they stumbled upon something else, like something else they could do as a plot device, right? How these monsters, like why they're coming to be in, like we have this thing of aliens now. And then suddenly that become the standard, like that become the normal thing to do, right? We've moved away from sort of the nuclear testing. Now we're going into aliens and the trouble is they come up with a new idea, a fresh idea. Then they start to repeat it again as well. So the UNSC, the United Nations Space Committee, um, if I remember that rightly, from the UNSC, United Nations Space Committee, yeah, for those of you who don't know, has gone further with, they've gone like further with space travel, and we have Monster Island, which is like a research post for studying all the monsters, as I mentioned. Just imagine, as I say, like sort of a Jurassic Park type of thing, but sort of not an amusement park. I won't list them all, but like I say, we have Godzilla, um, Rodan, Anguirus, Mothra, sort of all boxed in by that slight security system. So on this island and their, their aquaculture project is supervised from under the ground. So out of nowhere the base, um, out of nowhere the base on the island gets overcome by all this gas. Uh, when the UNSC gets through to see what's happened, they see that the island has been all but destroyed and that the monsters are attacking various places around the globe, which was quite awesome to see. Uh, I think that. Um, just that whole novelty of like these different monsters attacking different places the world over um i thought that was quite interesting um you know i i think that just like visually 
um, it do does work. Um, bring into more of a world problem um, than sort of like um, sort of a Japanese, just a Japan like a Japan only type of problem. Rodan has attacked Moscow, for instance. Mothra is in Beijing. Manda is in London. Godzilla is in New York. Though the weird weird thing is, though, although Tokyo is Tokyo is like the closest city to Monster Island, it is one of the few cities that hasn't been attacked at this point in the movie. Like, sit, like capital cities around the world have been attacked, but for whatever reason, Tokyo is left alone. Um, so the space shuttle um, SY3 in this movie has some great miniature shots. Of course, you can tell it is a model, but it looks I think it looks really cool with like the thrusters and things like that. And whilst on board this shuttle, our astronauts spot like a UFO in order to go back to Monster Island to learn what has happened and why the monsters are loose, like why are they suddenly out of the compound, what's going on. Um, they meet two of the workers there, Kyoko and the Doctor, and we learn the monsters are apparently under control for causing like all this destruction. Like sort of, of course they're being controlled. There's always a higher force controlling the monsters. They take our lead, Katsuo, played by Akira Kubo, and his fellow astronauts to a secret section of the base where we meet this woman from Kylak, which, if you don't know, is an asteroid between Mars and Jupiter. Come on. Everybody knows where that is, right? Of course. Um, of course that's where it is. And so she is like a bulletproof, and she has like this shield around her and wants the humans to surrender. So, you know, it's the usual stuff. You know, I'm not going to go into that too much. I don't really think there's any need to. Uh, but let's just say it's business as usual. They escape after a gunfight with Katsuo's gun sounding like a pea shooter and him shooting at some of his former colleagues, I might add. I believe in killing, actually killing some of them, um, sort of because they've been sort of manipulated by the aliens. So they get out and take the doctor with them, who is under their control too, who after questioning just ups and jumps out of the window. Like they're questioning this like hotel room sort of place and he sort of jumps, gets up, jumps out the window. And, and yes, with the jump, with the flying down out of the building, it is a very, very obvious looking mannequin dummy and that we've seen in so many movies, so I won't comment on that. Then some Kylap followers turn up at the beach out of nowhere who are then randomly ambushed by the secret police. After this, they do an autopsy and find like a receiver that was implanted in the doctor's head and they predict that the monsters are being controlled by the same way. Now, these devices are all over the, like, the globe, but like they're at a church in Spain, they're in the White Cliffs of Dover, um, and at the same time, they are still looking for the employees of Monster Island. Manda, Godzilla and Rodan start attacking Japan and cure a wonton of action and heavy gunfire, which does, I think it does look awesome. I think this film, um, let's say, especially with Honda behind the camera, so, you know, there's a lot of moments in this film that really do look cool. I absolutely love the shot of Manda wrapping himself sort of around the monorail track. Um, I think that's probably one of the images I took most from this movie that I always remember. So it turns out they were diverting attention away from Japan so they could get busy and build their stronghold uh, base in Izu. Kyoko says that the aliens want to stay there and negotiate for peace and prosperity for the people of Earth. Katsuo rips her earrings off and we learn that it shows she is being controlled. So they go hunting and looking for their new base with some nice aerial shots. They go to land and wouldn't you know it, Godzilla is in their landing zone. You know, pesky, they're going to land, Godzilla's in this landing zone. Absolutely love the smoke and the gunfire here with tanks and bullets firing everywhere. Then just when you think things can't get any worse, Anguirus turns up. You know, just think when you're having a bad enough day at the office as it is, Anguirus turns up, it's like, oh, come on. The spaceship spots another UFO and decides to follow it this time, although the only snag is this time they have Rodan in pursuit behind them. Our hero suspect the alien's hideout is next to Mount Fuji. See, this is why they didn't attack there, because that's where their hideout is. They go to investigate on foot, and Godzilla is on their, on not in their way yet again, and they randomly find this entrance. And so I'm cutting a lot of corners here going through the movie. It's probably not making a lot of sense, me just like reciting, like sort of going over the plot with you guys, but just trying to give you sort of an overall picture of what happens. They are then confronted by the female, like the aliens, who show them their base and saying, basically, this area is theirs now and belongs to us. Then we find out that the moon is actually the true source of this signal. So they go there, and this space shuttle, they, like with the um, the other movie, that they do treat this. It's like a it's like a taxi ride when they go, like when they go went to Planet X and like back, and it's the same thing here. It's like one minute on the moon, then back to Earth, then off to the moon again. Like they can get there so quick, and it's it's just like a quick little taxi route. So they go there, and to prove the gravity of our like the situation, our hero Katsuro says we will either be heroes or in body bags within the hour. 
So such is the you know, severity of what's going on here. He's like, well, you know, if we, we either succeed or we're going to be in body bags. So they land at the target destination, always having to backward, you know, go backward in, I might add, and proceed in their sort of rover vehicle. The thing is, this movie is about, you know, when I talk about B movies, and especially, like I say, the early Godzilla movies are, by and large, like you could cl classify them as B movies, but this one in particular, Destroy All Monsters, is about as B movie as you can get. Um, you know, but a really well done B movie, if that makes sense, with actual effort put in. And I love how the guy on the moon base is like, if they fail, we will be the next to die. Anyway, let's have some coffee. That is actually what he says. That is actually what he says. Anyway, let's have some coffee. I have to love too how a guy from the Earth base is trying to phone the moon base using just the standard telephone receiver, which I thought was quite amusing. So they manage to destroy the source of this signal in a very tense, sweaty scene. Then, of course, they have to fly back to Earth again. We learn that the aliens need high temperatures to survive so they can live longer. We also learn that the monsters are on the good guy's side now and are now directing them to the alien base. So the monsters, like, they're not being controlled. They're, they've switched sides. They're not you know they're not being they haven't got a puppet master behind them or anything like that um we even get commentary here like you would with a sporting event oh here comes godzilla with mothra hot on his heels and things like that there's little comments thrown in there like you're watching a sports event or something like that you get the running commentary um Kamunga even turns up from the previous movie but then pesky aliens have to go better don't they then pesky aliens have to go one better they summon Ghidorah, like Ghidorah turns up, they've summoned Ghidorah. What is cool is Anguirus does quite well as he gets an attack in on Ghidorah. The only snag is that he takes off with him, biting him, only to fall straight to the ground and causing a major ground shake. So he sort of bites him, flies off, and then he sort of falls to the ground. The ground completely crumbles. So basically, Godzilla ends up stomping the crap out of one of Ghidorah's heads. Even Manila gets in a finishing move on him at one point with his weak atomic breath that he still obviously hasn't mastered uh, the atomic breath uh, from Son of Godzilla. Lots of, monsters, lots of monsters here. Not sure why like Manda doesn't show up, but you know, obviously they couldn't uh, maybe get all of them involved, but even still... So then the aliens unleash this weapon of theirs called the Fire Dragon, which is basically just one of their flying saucers, right? It's called the Fire Dragon, but it's just a flying saucer. Godzilla finds their base. What is cool that even now the monsters are no longer being controlled. They are still attacking the aliens as they know who the bad guys are, which I thought was quite cool. It's like, even though they're monsters, they know who the bad guys are. Like, they're not being controlled anymore, but, you know, they're not stupid. You know, they know when, like, sort of, there's something going on. So the SY3 goes after the Fire Dragon. We have a great late last pan shot over all the monsters. What I love about this movie is that you do get a true sense of like alliance with these monsters. And I think that is what is so cool. Obviously, this was done on a very, very small budget um, in, you know, in terms of especially in terms of films nowadays. But um, what they were trying to achieve here with a, you know, a balls to the wall, let's get all the monsters in, let's throw everything in there. For the most part, that does succeed. And it does, you know, it does succeed really well. Um, I know some critics of this film have mentioned that it can be boring in the sense that the monsters don't have very much to do uh, until the end of the movie, which by and large is relatively true. Um, that I can agree with that. Some, like I say, some even go into say it's just, um, just, boring for the most part in places while it's still a great movie i wouldn't put it necessarily in my top godzilla movies but then like like i mentioned with jackie chan and kung fu movies my top changes or this is why i could never do like a top whatever video because i would look at it i would make the video and then i would be i'd watch it like a week later and be like no that's changed that's now at number three do not ever ask me to do a top 10 or um, if I did a top 10, it would probably be rotating and changing it weekly. Uh, just depending on, as I say, what day of the week you ask me depends what my favorite is. So going back to Destroy All Monsters, it's one of their movies that is worth watching for the, the end alone. And yes, the film does drag a bit in places. Um, and, but as I mentioned earlier, it makes no mistake. You are definitely getting a bang for your buck in terms of them. If you want to see a wide range of monsters in a very early Kaiju, uh, Kaiju movie, Godzilla movie from Toho, you 
could do a lot worse than destroy all monsters because you're really getting you're getting all the monsters there just the unfortunate thing is until the, the last part of the movie the by and large they really don't have all that much to do which is a shame but you still get some great action in this movie nonetheless so thank you very much indeed for watching i hope you enjoyed the review and i'll see you again soon don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory